Howdy folks, it's your old model building buddy Brian here uh, with another fantastic episode of Boss Builds. Now we've had uh, some people writing in uh, about the last couple episodes where I haven't actually been building anything. I've been showing a lot of stuff, we call it Boss Shows I guess. Uh, but yeah, people have been writing in saying it's called Boss Builds but you're not building anything. Uh, as you know, if you've been following along, I am actually working on, or have been working on, or thinking of working on, The Incredible Hulk from uh, Dragon's One Night Scale uh, Superhero Vignette Series. And I've actually started doing some stuff. Well, you'd say, this doesn't look like you've done anything since the last time we saw this. Uh, and you're almost right, but a little wrong, because I have done some stuff. I've actually cut some stuff. Uh, as we were mentioning before, uh, I was going to cut off some of the um, little insertion plug type thingies uh, that make this a good snap kit. Uh, Dragon says it just snaps together, and in fact it does when you put it together like that, but it had these big, and I can show you here, uh, I don't know what you call these things, mushroom-like positive insertion coupling connection don't come apart things, um, which are fine, and it really did give it a nice positive fit in there, uh, but since I'm going to paint all these parts separately, uh, I decided I wanted as, as uh, less um, difficulty slamming the parts together as possible. And when it has those parts on there, uh, you can heat it up and all, but it really takes a, a bit of uh, crunching and slamming and power and monkey fisting to get those parts in there. And um, I didn't want to have to go through all that with these parts all nicely painted. So I cut those parts off, as you can see here, whack, uh, also off of the legs there, uh, using mainly this handy dandy Tamiya razor saw which I think we have on sale on the site here. This is available. Uh, nice little razor saw, cuts through this material very easily. I uh, cleaned it up a little bit with my handy dandy Tamiya hobby knife, uh, which you really don't have to worry about too much because this is all gonna be hidden. But the point was, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the point was is just to make uh, a nice smooth joint there where I wouldn't have to use all my incredible strength to mash the parts together as you would have had to do <clears throat> when it had the, those little flanges on there, I guess you can call them. Uh, so without those, you know, I'll just put glue on here, super glue, and um, nicely put them together. Still fits pretty positively there, but uh, you know, it wouldn't last long if you have a cat or an earthquake or anything like that. Uh, and the same with the legs. I, I cut those bits off, <clears throat> and now it fits in there. Still pretty tight, though, <clears throat> but it fits in there with a lot less effort. <clears throat> excuse me, than uh, would have been needed with those flanges on there. So just to make the assembly easier, uh, without the danger of marring the finish that uh, these will have when I'm done, uh, these will just be able to be glued together as I almost dropped the hulk. <clears throat> now, in the past, you know, I've been talking about, well, what is this material? Uh, when Dragon first came out with these kits, they just said they were plastic assembly kits. Okay, fair enough. So we all thought they were going to be injection molded plastic. And what we've seen so far, though, is Iron Man. The Iron Man kit definitely is injection molded plastic, but I think for the most part, the rest of them are some sort of vinyl. And as I mentioned in the first episode, well, yeah, it smells like vinyl. If you've built any vinyl kits, you know what the vinyl smell is like, <clears throat> and it smells like this. Uh, but not just relying on the old nose. I also tried some other things with some of the bits that I had cut apart here. Um, just some of the chunks, these are off of some of the, uh, the leg parts here. And I just tried to glue them together with regular plastic hobby cement glue. Because uh, I was also thinking, well, maybe this is dragon styrene. Dragon has a material they call dragon styrene, uh, which is very similar. It's soft and pliable like vinyl, uh, but you can glue it with regular uh, styrene modeling glue. So I tried that, and as you can see here, I still have two parts, so it doesn't work. Uh, these parts do not, uh, this material doesn't glue together with regular um, plastic model cement, <clears throat> or I even tried some ABS plastic uh, cement that I have, and uh, <clears throat> the glue doesn't work, so I'm almost certain that this stuff is vinyl. Smells like vinyl, uh, doesn't glue like vinyl. Uh, the only thing I haven't tried yet is uh, putting paint on these parts, which I think I'm going to test uh, with this big piece, and I've got some paints we'll show you later. Uh, but in any case, you can always use water-based paints on vinyl with no problem. But remember that uh, enamel-based paints will never dry on vinyl. It will always stay tacky and sticky. Um, so you don't want to use that. But anyway, uh, in the next couple episodes or so, when I get to the painting, I'll actually test that and see. But I'm using water-based paints anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so the materials and all that. Oops, I'm allowed feet. Uh, now what I'm actually going to do live on the air today, or on the tape anyway, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, is uh, the head. You know, I talked before about uh, maybe I would paint these parts separately and put it together because uh, you know the the head gets uh, the most detail painting, so it'd be nice to have it fancy free and ready to ready to paint. And on the when you put it on here, <clears throat> it's a little obstructed 
uh, by his massive right arm there. Uh, but I was just doing some testing with a paintbrush and going, well, it's not that easy, but I should be able to get in here with it on. Uh, the main reason I want to put it on is because there's a pretty good seam that goes around the neck. It goes the, from the, the hairline on the back of his neck uh, and around his jawline. I don't know if you can see there. But uh, just with the cold, cold hard vinyl, that room temperature, uh, you get a pretty good gap in there. So I was thinking, okay, uh, as I mentioned before, it's vinyl, so uh, the first thing I'll do is try to heat up both the parts with a hairdryer um, and then glue them together in a softened state. And usually, a lot of times with vinyl kits, you can get, uh, you can get rid of a lot of seams and gaps uh, just by heating it up because <clears throat> the vinyl gets very soft and you can squish it together and it looks pretty good. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I can actually do some putty. There's a variety of putties out there, but one that we... Uh, just got in as a sample here, and uh, again, not sure we're going to be able to sell this overseas, but this is by Deluxe Materials. It's a, it's a new, it's a water-based putty, and the cool thing I like about it, it's called Perfect Plastic Putty, that's for model kits, is it's got this cool, like, I don't know what you call this, like a little caulking cake decoration type thing on there, so I can put this on here, and I can get in really tight and just lay a little bead of putty where I want it, and it's water-based. So I can just take a Q-tip, fancy dance Q-tip here, uh, dip this in water, and I'm just going to show you the action. Just like go around here and smooth it out. So ostensibly, if all goes well, if I need to use the putty, I can just go around here with a wet Q-tip um, and smooth that out. And in the end, might not have to do any sanding at all. Um, so hopefully that'll work. And the main reason I'm wanting to do all this is because if I paint them separately, and put them on and then try to put on here, it's going to be difficult to deal with the gap. Because you've got to mind the gap at all times. You don't want a big gap there. Uh, so I've decided that I'm going to put the head on first and then deal with the painting later. And uh, that, to that end, I'm going to use this. It's a hairdryer. You might be asking, Brian, you don't have hair. What are you doing with a hairdryer? Uh, well, once upon a time I had, you know, I actually do have hair. This is a, this is a choice. I shaved this because of the choice. Anyway, um, this is like a 15-year-old hair dryer uh, that I used back when I had hair, and now I use it for vinyl kits whenever I build a vinyl kit. And um, it heats up pretty good, so you got to be careful with your hands. So what you do, what I will do here, is I'll just have the parts separately and uh, try to heat them up both at the same time, and it's pretty hot, so I'm not going to hold them in my hands. Just kind of get the things that I want to be heated in kind of the same room here, and then I'll just turn it on and heat them up. It'll take about, mm, I don't know, two or three minutes to really get, get it quite soft, uh, and then I will use my handy-dandy Tamiya super glue to put them on. But first, of course, do a lot of test fitting. You should always test fit anything before you glue, so I'm going to heat it up. Um, and then squeeze it together and see what kind of look I get with it. So here we go. I'm going to turn it on hot and start the heating. I can actually turn it on hot turbo. All right, now let's see what we got. Oh, I can tell just by flexing this stuff, it's pretty soft. I'm going to do a quick test fit here. And, oh, look how soft that is. So, if you're a musician, you have drumsticks in your house. I'm a, I've been a musician for a long time. And I'm sticking this in here to give me some support. And, wow, it's really soft. Dun, 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 dun. The heart of the Hulk beats. I, okay, enough humor. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, you can usually get one big finger in there. It's actually almost too soft. Look how soft that is. But if I can get a big finger in here or the drumstick, yeah, that closes those gaps right up. Closes it right up. I don't know if you can see in there, but the jawline gap is pretty good. And you see with just a regular fit, you get kind of a gap in the back there, but uh, heated up and closed up and smushed, that closes that right up. I think we might not need putty because uh, don't forget, it's also going to be painted. And I'll do highlights and darks and whatever. So all this around the neckline there is going to be dark. So even if there's a tiny seam there, yeah, I think we're good to go with this. I think we're good to go. Ah, another secret weapon. You've, uh, you've uh, probably been hearing me talk about my fading eyesight as I'm you know, 49 years old. Yeah, it's a pretty good run with no glasses. Um, but seeing things up close is a little hard. So I went to Walmart in the United States and got these. These are just reading glasses. I think they're like 1.5 
or two magnification 2.5 or something like that great like 10 bucks 10 bucks at walmart uh, we're getting off track here a little bit but anyway to have a closer look at the seam oh yeah i think that looks good oh but wait there's not enough light oh my gosh for 10 bucks you get shazam lights so i'm checking this out with the lights and my drumstick and uh, yeah i think this is gonna work i think this is gonna work so would you young boys like some cookies and milk with that? Oh, yes. Okay, so it's grandma glasses. Anyway, so enough humor. I'm going to glue this together, but to get it going, I'm going to heat it up just a little bit more, get that flexibility back there, and then I'm going to slather on some of the CA. Well, you don't slather on. Put on a, a appropriate amount of CA glue here, cyanoacrylate super glue, and then I'm just going to slam this guy together. So wish me luck. You're going to see it all live here on camera. So a little more heat. Try not to burn your fingers because then this can get pretty hot. Just a little more heat here. This vinyl really got flexible. So I'm pretty sure it's vinyl. The styrene doesn't, doesn't work this way, even if it's dragon styrene. Might right, right, right. Okay, that's probably good enough. Now, since it's easier to work with the head, that's what I'm gonna do. This is the Tamiya Brush Applied Super Glue. So the key parts I want to be firmly glued are of course these outer edges. So I'm trying to be careful here and not get too much, but I want it to be right to the edge. And then for extra added adhesion, I'm just gonna slather on some in here as well. Probably too much, but you know, hey, it can all be sanded off at some point. All right, super glue safely off to the side, head firmly gripped, glasses on, time for the push. And there it is. And he's got the drumstick. And he's pushing. And he is eradicating that seam line as best he can. Okay, how's it looking over here? All right, that's not bad. Maintaining pressure. Ooh, super glue always smells so good when you have your face right in it. With heated. Okay. He's getting a little shaky because the pressure's on. That's looking good. I think this is gonna work out. Might have a slight gap. Oops, getting a little super glue coming out on the side, which is why you should always have tissues or some sort of thing. I'm just going to wipe a little bit of that off. I had a little goosh outside there. All right. Pushing, pushing, pushing. And you should just hold it for a while. Super glue usually works very quickly, but I want to make sure, since the whole point of this operation is to eradicate as much of the seam as possible with just the glue. I'm going to hold it here for a bit longer. Mm. Mm. Might actually need some putty at the end of all this. When I push it together, I don't know if you can see here, push it together, it really does take the gap out. But when I let go, that gap opens up a little bit. So there's obviously some sort of a fit issue somewhere that's keeping it from flexing. And I'm gonna get rid of a bit of the gush again, which can all be sanded out later too. But perhaps I just need to hold it longer, okay. So now I'm squeezing the front and the, body, the, front and the back of the body to keep the rigidity in the body because it's still a little soft from the heat. Uh, and just trying to get all that super glue to set. What say ye, Hulk? Power. Still Clarkson thing again, sorry. Hmm. Well, I'm still getting, it's certainly glued on there. I think I'll take the unprecedented step of adding a little drop of super glue along this back, because that's the only part that seems to be resisting here. And resistance is, of course, futile, but again, this can all be sanded at some point. So I'm just going to slather some in there. 
I'm actually going to give it a quick wipe with the tissue and hold it on. Now you can see it's a little shiny back there because I just put some glue on there. But that was the main seam I wanted to eradicate. Uh, pretty good seam over there too. <laughs> Wow, that seemed to have done the trick. Although it's now shiny and super gluey, which of course will be, I can sand a bit and cover up with paint later, but uh, the gap has now disappeared under the hairline. And with appropriate painting and all that, uh, that should all disappear. And of course, you know, another very, I don't need these anymore. Ha, welcome back. Another uh, very simple technique uh, in eradicating seam lines like this is uh, when you put it on your shelf to display it, have it face out. And no one can see the seam in the back. That's one of the, very, that's one of the easiest techniques in uh, taking care of seams. Just don't put it where you can see it. Um, so yeah, from the front, no problem at all. No seams at all. On the side, uh, you get that little jawline thing in there, which I think is going to be covered up pretty much when I shadow and paint them up and all that but yeah from the front he looks pretty good and from the very back for those of you you know if you got a show or something then yeah he's out in the middle and you can see that back there uh but i'm pretty happy with that don't know how it's showing up on camera i mean you can definitely see the the demarcation line between the two parts um uh, but there's actually hang on children let me put the glasses back on uh yeah the the material is as, about as closed as it can be so I will go in there later. Uh, and once this all sets and dries, um, I might think it over. And if I deem it necessary, I might whip out the perfect plastic putty and try a little bit on there. But I was trying to avoid all that and trying to just get a, as good a join as I could uh, in a simple way as possible. But anyway, I'll show you more of that next show. So head on. The Hulk's head is on. And uh, for the moment, I'm pleased with the fit. Um, you know, the primer. See, that's where this kind of thing will come out. If I uh, prime this whole part here, uh, I'll really be able to see what the joint looks like. Um, so I might use a white primer on this. And then, as I think I mentioned before, either using an airbrush or maybe just a regular brush, since it's, all, it's only going to be for an under effect, it's all the creases and crags and crevices between, in his muscles here um, will do with the black in there as sort of a pre-shading type thing. It already kind of looks appreciated now just because of the way the, uh, the material is. Uh, but go in there first, do it uh, either a light gray or white primer, and then go in and uh, accentuate all the crevices here with black, and then start putting the green on top of that. And uh, it should, uh, e even with a pretty good coverage of the green, that black will still kind of show through a little bit, and you'll get uh, a real deep uh, effect, um, the highlights and all that. And then using different colors, uh, highlight it and all. And then at the end, do washes and all. So it'll all work together. Uh, to give it a little bit of more depth, a little less toy-like, a little less figure-like, more statue-like or realistic. And speaking of paint, <clears throat> as you might have known before in some of my things, I'm colorblind, red-green colorblind, and as we know, the Hulk is green. Oh my gosh, what's Brian going to do? Well, Brian will read the labels on the paint, for one thing, because it usually says green or whatever on there, uh, but also I had um, um, our uh, co-worker and... Um, Art guy Ryan, who's also our cameraman and does a lot of things around here, helped me out with the colors. He's good with colors. So we thought, uh, based on the movie and this, that this particular Gunze Sangyo Aqueous, it's a water-based color, uh, interior green, this is for American World War II aircraft, interior green, was a pretty good match. Uh, it's really, I always thought this was too bright to begin with, but this looks like a pretty good match uh, for like the box art here, which is a pretty good match for what we saw in the movie. So I'm going to use this interior green color uh, as Hulk's base color. And I will be using from the same series, Aqueous, just flat white and uh, flat black to lighten and darken it. Uh, so once I do the black pre-shading here, I'll probably just uh, use the airbrush and spray on just this as it is uh, and put it on there. And, and then go through using the flat white, lighten it up a bit, and uh, just hit highlights on the bulging muscles and hitting it from above just to get some highlights on there. Uh, this all applies for the legs too. Uh, he's got pretty gnarly knees there that will really show some good detail. That'll pop out. Uh, so yeah, interior green. This is H58. Again, we can't sell these overseas, unfortunately, due to shipping regulations. Uh, but if you live in Japan, you can get these from us um, or your local hobby shops or wherever you are in Europe, States, or wherever. Uh, they might have these. Mr. Hobby, the aqueous water-based colors. This is H58 interior green I'm going to use for the base. Flat white, flat black. 
Uh, now for the pants, this seemed to be a pretty good match already, so we went out into the warehouse and found uh, this. This is also an aqueous color. It's mahogany, which is like a wood, right? You guys probably know more than I do. Anyway, going to use this um, for the pants and do the same thing with the white and the black, lighten and darken it, and uh, try to get a nice depth on this thing. Now this doesn't quite have the, the deep folds and crevices as musculature has, but it's got some nice folds in there, so this should also uh, respond well to um, the painting and uh, do dry brushing too on there. Um, for his hair, the instructions just say black. I'm gonna have to look at the movie again. Uh, was his hair just black black? Uh, I got something cool here called black green that I might add some other black to uh, just to keep the whole green thing going with the guy here. Um, so I'll probably use this as the base for his hair. Now, this green and this mahogany are semi-gloss colors, which means they're not really flat and they're not really shiny. They're semi-gloss, or semi-gloss, as they say. Um, I prefer to spray and work with flat colors when I'm doing weathering and stuff like that. So I've also got uh, some flat base here. Now, this is a material that you add to glossy colors or whatever colors you want to make them flatter. Uh, if you have a flat color that's not flat enough, you just add a couple drops of this and it flattens it up. Now this is not to be confused with clear flat, or flat clear as they say here. And these are all, this is all in the same series, aqueous colors. Um, this is a clear flat that you put on as the last coat. Usually I use it with an airbrush and spray it on there uh, to make everything a nice flat, uh, non-shiny surface. Uh, if you spray the flat base by itself on there, it's going to turn into a white, flaky, snowy, dusty mess. So do not just use flat base on its own. Flat base is to be added with other colors. Uh, flat clear can be used on its own. So it's close. And we hear a lot of horror stories around the internet about people, oh, I used a flat base on what it did, didn't make it flat. It turned it into a snowy mess because it's flat base. Uh, oh, at one point I forgot. This is actually a Tamiya color, this um, black green. So I'll be using this with my other Tamiya colors. Um, you probably can, but I don't like to mix the brands of paint too much together because you never know what might explode. Who knows? No, it's not going to explode, but it might not mix well, particularly if you're going to be using it in your airbrush. Uh, so I usually keep uh, mixed Tamiyas with Tamiyas, mix the, the Gunze Sangyos with Gunze Sangyos. And uh, I always use, uh, these are all aqueous, so you can use water uh, efficiently to, to thin them. Uh, but I always just use the appropriate thinner. I use the Tamiya water-based thinner for the Tamiya paints and uh, for the uh, Mr. Hobby Gunze Sangyo colors. I always use their, the thinner that they use. It's cheap. It goes a long way. Ah, so those are the paints I'm going to be using to paint the Hulk. Um, got the head on here. I think everything's pretty much dry. Uh, seam probably could be better, but I think I will wait until I prime the whole thing to make any more decisions because uh, from the front, it's, it's fine from the front. Uh, and from the back, I think with paint on it, uh, that should look good enough, too. Um, I mean, if you absolutely want to have no seam whatsoever, then you might want to try putting it up a bit. Uh, but like I said, you know, there's always that face amount from the shelf. No one will ever know. Except you. And if that's important to you, then you might want to do that. Um, and again, drumsticks. This came in handy. Any tray, anything you got laying around the house, you know, might even use this when I paint the guy or something. Toilet paper rolls or something like that. Uh, whatever you have laying around the house. It helps you get the job done. Um, you know, avail yourself to that. So this came in handy because my fingers were just not quite long enough to, to hold them up there. So drumsticks. Oh, it's got a good ring to them. Uh, and that's about it for this episode. So boss builds. Well, I put one part and two parts together. So that's building, isn't it? And uh, we talked about what's going to be happening with the painting. So that's where we are with the Dragon's Incredible one ninth Scale Incredible Hulk kit. Uh, and hopefully I'll have some more for you next time here on Boss Builds.